Hello folks, today's video we're going to be just swapping out this uh, power supply for a Be Quiet 1000 watt power supply. Uh, I've had some problems, in case you remember I upgraded the cooling in this machine and um, occasionally now it's just shutting itself off. So I think the uh, power supply that's been in here for a few years is probably hitting a uh, current over, uh, over current protection. So I'm going to try swapping it out for a more powerful one and see if they get through the problem. But um, we're just going to run through it and hopefully things should go pretty straightforward. But we're going to find out right now. So start by disconnecting and getting rid of the old one. Access is a little bit tight now with that new cooler and new fan. But basically we've got to remove the supplemental power up here for the CPU. I mean, I can get the clip one done. So we've got power for the graphics card. Two 8 pin headers. And then the ATX power supply to the motherboard itself. All right. This uh, machine, I don't have any external drives other than the M2 slots, so I shouldn't have any of those to deal with. So let's get the old one out. And we'll just start putting in the new one. While we're doing this, I can talk a little bit real quickly about electronic theory, or electrical theory rather, just so that you know what the words mean. Uh, volts, amps, and watts are the three most common terms you'll hear in computer power supplies. The volts, usually you have 12, 5, and 3.3 volts. That refers to basically how much power or pull there is between the electrical poles. In other words, how bad the electrons want to get from positive to negative. So that would be voltage. Kind of think of it as if you're, I like the analogy of rocks rolling downhill. The voltage would be how steep the hill is. Amperage is the amount of electrons, the actual quantity flowing through a connection. So that would be like the number of rocks rolling down the hill. And um, then you have the wattage, which is kind of a combined total of the volts times the amps, actually, is how you calculate wattage. And that would be sort of like the uh, amount of power or work that the rocks could do when they're coming down the hill. So. If you have more rocks or a steeper hill, you will wind up with more total kinetic energy that those rocks can exert. So that would be the wattage. Like I said, wattage is literally just calculated as volts times amps. So that's a short look into Ohm's Law. There's a 12 volt. ATX connection there. And we should have the uh, the PCI rails. Which And we'll loop them in there for me. That's all right. Looks like we've got a bonus screw that came out of there. Down to the bottom. 
I will be using a modular power supply. It basically just means that they are uh, cables are individually attached. I would give you a piece of advice on that. If you are, uh, like most of us, you put your cables aside once you're done hooking them up and you usually wind up with a few extras and then later on you might need some new ones. Always be sure to use just the cables that came with the power supply that was provided. Simply because they can be wired differently. Which sounds weird, but I would never, 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 never trust changing the cables amongst different power supplies. You could wind up with a pretty nasty surprise. So. There's our new power supply, and you can see that there's quite a few connections down there. So let's get the cable bundle they gave me here, and we'll put in the ones that we need. In this case, we're going to need two PCI. That would be these guys here, and of course... Follow the orientation of the cables. You will notice that they are shaped in such a way that you really can't put the wrong ones in the wrong holes. But please don't try to force them. Uh, you might wind up with another kind of nasty surprise on that one. Mm. There's our 24 pin ATX connector. And that is the same on both ends. So we'll just do it like that. There we go. That makes much sense. And uh, looks like that one's labeled P8. So that would be for our CPU. Again, this is a be quiet system. And they are marked on both ends. So, I'll make sure I'm using the right one. So, looks like it's labeled P8, which means since there's two sockets, this would support dual CPUs. Um, fan orientation is another thing to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of power supplies, you can face them so that air is either blowing in or out. I generally always try to have the fan to the outside of the case. Because uh, I'd rather have it getting fresh air. But most cases, like I say, you'll notice that they can be installed either way. Now, just for the sake of saving time, I am probably not going to re-cable tie all this back together. Just so that we can get to kind of the heart of the matter. It will wind up being a fairly long video, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I do recommend good cable management, especially on the back side, simply because they uh, have a lot of airflow on the inside of the case or what would be the front of the motherboard, but not a ton on the back. They rely a lot on convection and uh, Airflow dynamics get a little weird back there, so any restrictions really kind of are amplified. And the motherboard and power supply are two of the probably more hidden problems you can have because uh, it's easy to overheat your CPU and know about it because it'll keep track of itself. And most monitoring software, that's one of the sensors that's always on there. So that one you shouldn't have too much trouble keeping track of. The motherboard sensors usually are also focused on the VRMs, but 
Rarely, if ever, will you get feedback on the back side of a motherboard. So that one can kind of surprise you. So I would, like I say, try to give yourself the best airflow possible. And to that end, keeping them tidy and kind of channeled as much as possible will help keep them out of harm's way. But we're getting up here with the EPS rail. And it does look like this one does have a little bit shorter cables. So I was kind of warned about that in the reviews. But we'll make it work for now. And the other thing to point out, you'll notice a lot of them have what kind of these multi stage connectors or I'm not sure what the right word for it is but some of the older motherboards are only 20 pins this one also has the ability to be 20 or 24 so when you're hooking these up make sure you get the right configuration and in the right placement simply because again you could hook them up wrong and most cases you won't have too big of a problem it just either won't won't work or you'll get some kind of a change in functionality but if you're really really lucky you can always connect the power to ground and, and your day is going to be real bad real fast and you don't want that so just follow along the bouncing ball as much as you can and uh, like I say, with these multi-position connectors, make sure you get them placed properly. But, um, because of the length of these, these do look like they're going to be kind of fun to get in there. So I'm going to go ahead and fiddle with it off camera. And uh, we'll come back and take a look once I get her buttoned up. All right, and we're back. Uh, took a little bit to get that finagled in there, but I uh, got her done. I did have to pull the fan up here on the top just to get a little extra clearance for the CPU plug, but oh no, not too bad. Uh, the other thing that occurred to me to mention, uh, especially with the new 12 volt high power rails, looks like they've had problems with them getting uh, connected properly. Uh, we'll just kind of leave it at that, but when you're putting these connections in, there is usually a retaining clip on them. Make sure they click all the way into place because uh, if they don't, they could, um, well, basically the pins heat up and bad things happen. Well, like I said, just kind of leave it at that. But in any of these connections, and it's true in all computer things, make sure that it goes in there right and it goes in there tight. You don't have to jam on it. They're usually pretty easy to get clicked into place. but. If it feels like it's not meant to go in there or it's not going in right, figure out why. Don't just brute force it because you will cause yourself a lot of problems sometimes. And, um, well, the results, like I say, especially with those new 600 watt high voltage, 12 volt high voltage connections, could be a little bit unfortunate. So, um, but we're just tucking everything back together here. Like I said, I'm trying to just uh, keep everything as much out of the path of airflow as possible. I'm not getting super worried about the aesthetics. And for me, I found these little Velcro strips to be just wonderful. They're reusable, they're very flexible, easy to use, and um, allow you to create a pretty good finished result and they're really pretty cheap I'm sure I just paid a few bucks for a whole package of these so but uh, do use them like I said the more you can keep flow flowing the better off your system will run and another thing I usually kind of beat into text when I'm doing any training is that heat and power are both kind of the silent killers on a computer and uh, heat especially in a modern desktop they have had the limits of physics kind of kick in and some of the harder things to keep track of are just heat management they've solved a lot of technical issues but that one still can, can come up so I would recommend that you 
be aware of it. Not afraid of it, but just be aware of it. So, here's our finished result. I will do some more wire tucking, but essentially we've got the twin header here for the GPU. Now on this one, you'll notice that it is running a two out of one connection. That is somewhat of a controversial subject. My own experience is that for this wattage of card, it has no problems. But for the newer GPUs, I would be aware that you can run a second cable and split the power amongst the cable, or split the, yeah, split the current among the cables. Not a terrible idea. Um, in my case, like I said, I've used this one long enough to know that it's completely fine with a single connection, but be aware of that. But uh, we've got our two power connections for the GPU. We've got a single power connection header up here. This is supplemental power for the CPU. And then the main 24-pin ATX connector for the motherboard. And that's what tends to feed the overall systems. This one is just supplemental amperage. And then this one runs exclusively for the video card. So that's about it. The power supply has changed. Everything will be tested. But for now, we'll just assume it's good. So I thank you for watching. A little bit quicker video today. But... Uh, I had to do this anyway, so I figured I'd film a little quick bonus video and trying out the audio on the camera. So hopefully this sounds okay. If it doesn't, I'll make some tweaks in the future. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that like or subscribe and um, enjoy your day. Thank you very much.